All right, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how electrically insulating particles, um, what we call dielectric particles, moving through a dielectric pipe, basically plastic particles moving in a plastic pipe, can generate an electric charge. It's due to something called the triboelectric effect. That's when you rub two dissimilar materials or both electrical insulators, or so called dielectrics, against each other. One will pick up a excess of electrons, become negative, the other loses electrons and becomes positive. Just an example of how you can demonstrate this. This is a bundle of just typical polyester yarn. I'm just I'm rubbing it on this sheet of nylon. And you can see how the nylon, when it gets near this balloon, will tend to attract the balloon towards it. And uh, that's a pretty significant effect, actually. And uh, so that's basically the triboelectric effect, rubbing this insulator. Exactly whether or not the nylon picked up a positive charge versus this, it most likely did based on the triboelectric series. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But some time ago, I think it goes back to the days of Benjamin Franklin, um, someone had decided that a glass rod when rubbed with a piece of silk will pick up a excess or, or lose electrons to the silk and become positive. Now, if I just rub this and hold it near this other glass rod, it's a little hard to see. It starts attracting because I didn't rub the other one. Very hard to see. There it goes. It's moving. Now, theoretically, if I rub both of them, although this is South Carolina in late May and it's raining outside, so we can't get the kind of charge that we'd really like to get. But theoretically, if both of them are rubbed together, the charges are the same and one will repel the other one. You can see it appears to be doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is my... Um, Triboelectric particle in a pipe electrostatic generator. It's just the idea of it was just to demonstrate how particles, electrically insulating particles moving in an electrically insulating pipe and sliding through it can generate static electricity enough to generate a spark. How this thing is designed is this is just a roughly two and a half inch diameter clear PVC tube. It's called an ice tube. I purchased it off Amazon for packing materials in it. This is a six inch garden gazing ball. I simply used a hole saw, drilled out one end and glued the end cap here. I put some of this anti-static tinsel inside of it. The idea being as the polypropylene chip slides down through here, picks up charge, and it goes in, slides into the ball. It's losing some of this charge in the inside of the ball. And when you've got a spherical conductor, the charge that goes into that spherical conductor will tend to accumulate on the outside of the conductor. And you can accumulate charge that way, just like a Van de Graaff generator usually has a rounded or a large uh, spherical thing. Now, this isn't a Van de Graaff generator, it's another device I'm going to talk about right now, but I've got this sphere here, electrically grounded to our metal building frame here, an electrical ground. I found out that when I put tinsel on the outside of this um, and ground it, I tend to get a little bit better sparks. And again, this this is late May, South Carolina, and humidity and it's raining outside. We're not gonna give us the best spark. This is silica gel, desiccant. I've got some screen on this, and the idea is try to keep the inside of this dried out to, to defeat humidity. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to tilt this back and forth, and the chips, Polypropylene chips slide down into that sphere, and then they slide back down this way. And when they slide down across the tube and go into the sphere, giving up some of their charge inside of that sphere. Did you get that one? I got that one. Okay. Okay. We've got the lights out. We still got the humidity problem outside. We're going to try to get a little better spark. Something that we can see a little better. I've always liked making big sparks. And uh, if this is winter time, it sure be a lot easier. It'd be dry inside here, but we'll see how this does. I 
This is a triboelectric series that I got from Alpha Labs off the internet. It's very good. I like it because down at the bottom down here, they describe how they obtain their data. It's great. Um, but basically, the materials at the top of this, the dielectrics up here, tend to lose electrons, become positive. And as you go down here, they go through neutral, where there's not much change, all the way down to the most negative down here where they pick up a lot of uh, excess uh, electrons. So, but basically what I've done here is just highlight um, here uh, vinyl, it's clear PVC tubing, minus 75. All things like polypropylene, like the chip I got in that tube, minus 90. And rigid PVC down here, rigid vinyl, minus 100. Not sure where this PVC tube falls in there that I've got, but it's surprising that it works as well as it does because there's not that much difference between the polypropylene and either one of those PVCs I've got on here. It's very interesting. One thing I wanted to show to those of you who are experimenting, doing some of this thing, static experiments for the first time, one thing that defeated me when I was first built my first Van de Graaff generator was I kept bringing a grounded needle next to my charge collection sphere, and the sparks were all real small. I couldn't understand what was going on. I just wanted to show you uh, what happens when you... I've got a safety pin on there. So you get no spark at all. If you're trying to demonstrate a spark with a sharp point, you're not likely to see much of anything. And the reason for that is the... Uh, Charge density is very high around a very, very small radius of curvature, like a sharp point. That's why lightning rods are pointed. So you're bleeding off the charge before it even gets close to it. See, virtually nothing. And of course, with a lightning rod, that's what you want. But if you're trying to make a big spark just for demonstration or just messing around, don't use a point anything with a needle or a sharp point like that. It'll just bleed off all your charge and you'll never see your sparks. Thank you. Let's rub this with silk again. Try to stabilize it. Let's see if we can see what happens. It repels it. Okay, so we've got a positive charge accumulating in this sphere. Kind of interesting. One other thing I wanted to mention is there are practical uses for electrostatics. This is a copy of my brother's master's thesis from the Georgia Tech Department of Geophysical Sciences from many years ago, where he studied the uh, electrostatic beneficiation of land pebble phosphorite. Basically, taking a mineral, grind it up, and then one type of mineral, when it separates mm -hmm. from the other, one becomes positive, one becomes negative. And in its simplest form of separation, he's got several things he studied here. I just wanted to show in the simplest. You've got two electrodes. Put your ground up ore between them. Positive goes one way, negative the other, and that way you can concentrate your minerals. That's a good practical use for um, electrostatics. One final comment I want to make that if you're vacuuming combustible dust using ordinary shop vacs like this um, because of the, the tendency to build up electrostatic charges with moving particles in a plastic pipe, you're just pushing your luck until you blow yourself up. could kill yourself and your whole everybody in your plant. So don't do it. There's intrinsically safe vacuums available that are properly grounded where you don't get the deadly uh, electrostatic charges building up. So that's all I had to say. I hope somebody got something out of this. Thank you very much.